got this application called uHaiku, where users can write up a haiku and add it to the site. Now there are many haikus which have already been added and I would like users to be able to vote for them, either, either giving them a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Now there's currently no voting system in place yet, so how could I add this feature? Well, you can certainly do this from scratch, but here I'll be using this gem, the Active Record Reputation System. Uh, this allows you to easily calculate an average user rating or sum up the number of votes and more. So let me show you how to get it working in this application. I'll start by adding this gem to the bottom of my gem file called Active Record uh, Reputation System. And you'll need to also require the file separately is called uh, Reputation underscore System. And as usual, run the bundle command to install the gem. And next you'll need to run this generator called Reputation underscore System. So this generates a few migration files which I'll take a look at later, but for now let's just migrate the database. Next, I'll go into the model I want to be able to vote on, which is the haiku model, and I can add a call in here to has reputation, and then pass in the name I want to give the reputation. In this case, I'll call it votes. And then I need to pass in a couple more options. A source, which I'll set to user, and that's the model that will be doing the voting. And then I need to pass in an aggregated by option, and set that to either sum or average or product, depending on how you want the calculation to happen. Now these options are all documented in the README and there are some other ones that you can pass in as well. So with that in place, I can now work on my voting system. I just want a couple links here to vote a haiku up or down. But the question is, where should these links uh, route to? So inside of the routes file, we have a couple of options. We could make a separate haiku votes resource, or we could just make this a member action on the haiku resource. So I'm going to do that here. So I'll just make this a post request to a vote action on the Haikus controller. So this means inside of my Haikus controller I have prepared, I need to define a vote action. And the value of this should be either plus one or minus one depending on the type of vote. So I'm going to have a type parameter and check if this is up. And if so, then we're going to be plus one. Otherwise, we'll, we'll do minus one. And then I can fetch the Haiku just like I am up here. Next, I can use a method provided by the reputation system called add evaluation, and this takes three arguments. The first one is the name of the reputation, which is uh, votes, and then the next one is the uh, value to do, so that's going to be the value variable we said earlier, and the, the third one is the source object, which in this case is going to be the current user object. And then finally, I'll just redirect to back, which is the refer, and uh, let's say a notice saying thank you for voting. Now I just need to add some links to do the voting. So this is the view template for displaying a haiku, and I'm going to first make a new link here for doing an upvote, and that'll go to the vote haiku path, and I'll pass in the haiku object, and also a type attribute, I'll set that to up, and then I'll set the method to a post. And I'll do the same thing for the down vote as well. Now you may need to restart your Rails app after adding the gem and then reloading the page. There are the up and down links, which we can click on up to vote that given haiku up. Now if you want to click the link again, let's see what happens. It says record is invalid because that given source has already been taken, which is that given user. So the reputation system automatically prevents duplicate votes. So we could either rescue from that exception in this controller action, or we could add, use a different method called add or update evaluation. So this will change the user's existing vote. So now if a user does vote again, it will just change their existing vote instead of raising an error. Now it would be nice if we could see how many votes a haiku received, so let's do that. We can do that by calling a method on the haiku object, a reputation value four, and we want the votes reputation, and this will return a float of the calculated results. So I'm going to turn that into an integer, and I also want to pluralize this so that it will show up nice and pretty. So reloading this page, uh, that shows it has negative one votes. We can upvote this one, and now that one has one vote. So now the question is, how would we sort these based on how many votes they have? I'm going to do this inside of the haikus controller index action where I'm currently just fetching all the haikus. There's a method provided called find with reputation, and then the first argument is the name of the reputation, which is going to be votes. And the second argument is the scope you want to use. Now I haven't talked about a reputation scopes yet. Uh, this isn't an active record name scope. This is something specific for uh, the reputation system. You can check out the readme for details, but here I'm just going to use the all scope so it finds everything. And then the third argument are any additional find options. I'm going to say to order by the uh, calculated votes result 
in descending order. And then watch this first haiku as I reload this page, and that goes down to the bottom of the page because it has negative one votes. Now what if I want to calculate the total votes a user has received for all their haikus and display that next to their name? Well, the reputation system allows us to define reputations sort of indirectly, so here's how we might do this inside of the user model. I'm going to call has reputation in here and also call this votes, but for the source, I'm going to use a hash, so this will instruct it to delegate to the reputation called votes on the haiku model. So this will go through the user's haikus association. And let's also have this aggregated by the uh, sum value. And then I can use this where I display the user's name, which is inside of my application layout file. So next to this, I want to display the number of votes in parentheses for the current user. And I can call reputation value for the votes reputation, just like I did in the uh, haiku template. So I'm going to convert this to an integer as well. So reloading this page, there's the number of votes I have, which is zero because the two I have cancels each other out. And if I upvote one, then the number of votes changes to one. Now what if I want some way to determine if a user has already voted for a given haiku and maybe hide these vote links if they have? Well, I couldn't find a good way to do this within the gem itself, but it's still possible. It just requires a little better understanding of how the reputation system works. Well, if you take a look at one of the migration files that we generated earlier, you can see that this gem creates a table called RS Evaluations, and a record is inserted in here when the user votes. So this keeps track of the reputation name, which is votes, the source, which is going to be the user model, and the target, which is going to be the haiku model, and notice that these are both polymorphic associations. And then finally, the value, which is either plus one or minus one. Now there is an RSE evaluation model that goes along with that table. So this means that we can associate our user record to that model. Uh, to do this, we could say maybe has many evaluations and we can set the class name to RSE evaluation. And we want to say as source because it is a polymorphic association. So with this in place, we can determine if a given a user model has voted for a given haiku. So we can fetch all the evaluations and determine if there's one where the uh, target type is the haiku class and the target ID is the haiku's ID. So let's just see if that object is present. And there are more efficient ways to do this if you're doing it a lot on one page, but I'll just leave it at it like this for now. Now with that method, we can hide these up and down links if the user has already voted. So here's what it might look like. If we have a current user, and that current user uh, has already voted, so voted for that given haiku. And actually, if they have not already voted for that haiku, then we want to display those up and down links like this. And now when I reload the page, those voting links are now gone on the haikus I voted for. So that's how you can change the behavior depending on what the user has voted on. Now there's probably more that you'd want to do to this application, such as adding this restriction to the controller action and also preventing a user from voting on his own haikus, but I'll leave that as an exercise. Well, that's it for this quick tour on the Active Record Reputation System. Now this is a handy gem, but I kept asking myself while working on this episode, how difficult would this be to do the same thing from scratch? So I decided to try it out, and as a bonus in the source code of this episode, I'll include this from scratch version so you can check it out in full detail on your own, but let me walk you through it really quickly. Basically, I made this haiku vote model which belongs to both a haiku and a user, and what I like about this is I can put a lot of custom validation specifically about my application in this vote model, including what type of vote values I want to accept, and whether or not the uh, user that is voting is the author of the haiku. Probably the most difficult thing to do from scratch is sorting the haikus based on the number of votes. And you can find this behavior inside of the haiku by votes method. And you can see it takes some gnarly SQL code to get this functionality working, but it works. Now another tricky area is determining the total number of votes for a given user. But this really isn't too bad with active records join functionality and the sum method. So the big question is, should you write this from scratch or use the gem? Well, I think the reputation system gem is really useful if you have a more complicated setup, especially if you have multiple models that you're handling the reputation on, as polymorphic associations can really help with that. But if you have a more simple setup, like the example application I have in this episode, then writing from scratch I think is a good option. That's all for this episode. Thanks for watching.
In this week's Pro episode, I go in depth into the Thread Safe config option, which will likely be enabled by default in Rails 4. There I break down what that option does, how to handle multiple threads in production, and some tips on writing thread safe code. To watch that episode and gain access to all previous Pro and Revised episodes, visit railscast.com/pro and you can sign up there for just $9 per month.